The standards you set create your reality. What do I mean by that? It is usually only when you set higher standards and set higher goals that things start moving, that resources start coming in. When you set your vision higher, suddenly the money comes in that you've been waiting for, for example. This happened to me recently. I've started looking for a bigger house uh, to move into, a house I cannot afford yet. But the moment I started intensely looking for such a house and uh, even visiting and walking through such houses, my desire for it increased. And with that increased desire came increased monies and increased resources. Now, we tend to get comfortable and relax into our comfort zone for a very long time. That's why energy gets inert and things don't seem to move as quickly because we remain in our comfort zones. Some people remain in their comfort zone their entire life. I know people, they've had the same job for 10 years, okay? I don't think that's a good idea. I think uh, up to five years of any job is quite enough to have fully experienced it. And the natural path as a soul is once you fully experience something, uh, you'll notice that and that it gets boring. Once you've fully taken the energy out of it, it's time to move on and it's time to expand. And many just don't have the courage for that and they stay with something because they're good at it, they're skilled at it, they're comfortable with it, and they think that comfort is something good. They think comfort indicates that that's the right thing for them. They say, I'm satisfied with this, I'm at peace with this, I'm happy with this, I'm good at this, that's why I'm going to stick to this for the rest of my life. And that's not ideal in my experience and my view. My philosophy in life what has made me and many of my students very successful is this. There is no such thing as stagnation. There is no such thing as keeping the status quo. Stagnation is actually gradual decline. Keeping the so-called status quo is gradual decline. If you're not improving and expanding, on a regular basis, you're actually declining. By continually growing and expanding and stepping outside of your comfort zone, you're mimicking or in alignment with the movement of the universe, which our scientists know is also continually expanding and continually growing with all the growing pains that go along with that. I've been listening to an audio book recently uh, called Total Recall. It's the autobiography of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the reason I uh, listened to that book is because that's a man who knew how it works, who did not rest on his laurels just because he became good at something, but sought to change, sought to expand. So this man, Arnold, um, he became the bodybuilding world champion. I think it was in 1976. And he could have rested on that, you know, he could have opened a gym and fed off of his old fame for the rest of his life. But he didn't do that. He wanted more. He wanted as a soul, to expand. So he said, okay, my next goal is to become one of the top five actors in the world. And he visualized that. And as he visualized that, he grew toward it. And he actually did become one of the top five actors in the world. And once that was established in around 1993, he said, uh, that's still not enough for him. So he married a Kennedy woman, and he said he wanted to go into politics. He wanted to become a governor, the governor 
of his favorite country, which was uh, California. And again, people said to him, well, that's not for you. You're an act actor. They'd pegged him into that role, as often happens to us. But nonetheless, he did become the governor of California. Even when Arnold was an action movie star, he wasn't satisfied with that. He hadn't learned that satisfaction is the aim of life. He wanted to be a comedy star, so he intentionally took comedy classes and hung out with comedians in order not to be pegged into the action star role. Often it's other people who peg us into certain identities that we find difficult to leave, but more often than not, it's ourselves. We peg ourselves into a certain identity that we feel comfortable with. And we think it's the right thing to stay in our comfort zone our entire lives. You know, a person says, yeah, I've been in this job for 50 years. That's what I'm good at. That's my skill. That's what I'm comfortable with. And that's why it's the right thing to do for the next 50 years. But in my view, that's not the right thing to do. That's not what the soul wants. That is not what you're here for. You're not here to be and do the same thing for, in my view, more than five years. Okay, that's about the time it takes to fully experience something to five to seven years. You're a total expert at something, sometimes only one to two years. Okay, and then it's time to move on, and you know that by the fact that you get bored with it, the energy is out of it. And what many people actually do when the energy is out and they start getting bored is they use discipline and willpower to stick to it, to stay loyal to the cause or whatever it is they think they're doing. So then they're no longer uh, expanding, they're just protecting the status quo and trying to expand within the very small bubble they are. Much unlike people like Arnold, who sought something entirely different. Okay, first a career in bodybuilding, which is sports, then a career in acting, and then a career in politics, and who knows what's next for that man. So, as the universe is always expanding, so should you. As you keep expanding, you're in alignment with the universe. You're not resting on your laurels. I like to say that uh, focus leads to success, but success often leads to lack of focus. So the pattern I see with many people, which is why I warn them of it, is they focus and focus and focus, and then they have some initial successes, and then they say, oh, wow, I made it. That's it. I finally made it. Now I can rest. And then they stop focusing, and what usually happens then is that they start receding again. They start declining again going back to their original state. So what I say to most of my students is once you reach those initial successes, tell yourself you ain't seen nothing yet. That is only the beginning. The best is yet to come. Rather than I made it, now I'm done. The truth is in this universe, you're never done. The universe never stops. The story never stops. You're never done. Okay, even when you've achieve the ultimate, the biggest goal you've ever had, you're still not done because you wake up on the next day tomorrow and it's a new day. It's a brand new day. How can you say, now I'm done? In fact, if you say, now I'm done, if you have no more goals, that's when you start getting sick and eventually you die. You leave the planet. That's, that happens with many people who retire you know, they think, oh, finally I can retire, I can rest, I don't have to do anything anymore. And with a lack of a purpose, you see their health getting worse and worse until they just pass away because they no longer have purpose, they no longer have drive. And that's not the ideal state. If somebody's constantly saying, now I've made it, I can finally rest, they have an 
exhaustion problem. It's because they don't uh, play, they don't relax, and they don't meditate enough. That's a whole other issue. You got to re-energize through relaxation, play, and meditation. That way you have enough energy for all the projects and all the goals. So becoming number one is one thing, but what about staying at the top? That's a whole different thing. Because once you've reached the top, there's a strong tendency in humans to say, okay, now I've reached the top, there's nothing more to do. And it's funny how quickly they lose that top position with that kind of attitude. So if you've reached, uh, let's say the top is 10 on a one to 10 scale, if you've reached level 10, then change your scale from one to 100. And if you've reached the top within your domain and it doesn't get any further, it's time to change the domain, to seek another d domain where you're starting from the beginning and can work yourself all the way to the top. That's the beauty, the zest, the challenge of learning. There's, uh, there are very things more beautiful than that. That's what the soul wants. It wants to take in and experience and feel and it can best feel something new by going into new realities that it's not familiar with. Not realities it already knows, it's already an expert in. And that is precisely the reason why I don't do my job as a coach 24 hours a day. I do about four or five seminars a year, and for the entire rest of the year, I'm involved in entirely different projects. Being comfortable and satisfied is not the ideal state. It's only a transition state before your next big challenge. Okay? And some people don't take it as transition. They take it as that means happiness and I'm going to be in that comfortable, comfortable safe state for the rest of my life. Why do they do that? It's uh, because they come from, often come from difficult backgrounds or a difficult past. And this comfort state seems appealing if you've had hard times. It seems appealing if you're exhausted. Okay? And that's where uh, energy management comes in. Relaxation, play, good nutrition, meditation, and so forth. That's the way to keep fresh and alive. Staying comfortable all the time is not a way to keep fresh and alive. So I'd say you have to, if this is your status quo, um, you have to always keep your eyes on challenges slightly above. Okay? Not too far above, because too far above is going to overwhelm you if I know some people, they set goals so high, they don't really have to, they're not, they don't do anything in the end. Okay, so high, unachievable for them, that they don't have to do anything. I'd set my goals right here, not too low, because if you're oh, underwhelmed, you lose energy. And if you're way overwhelmed, you lose energy. If you want to stay in a consistent, lifelong flow, you always keep your eyes slightly higher than you are. You set higher standards than the standards you're living now. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself at the very same place in another five years. And 10 years down the line, you'll still be in the very same house, doing the very same job, and so forth. The growth of consciousness is only outside of your comfort zone. It's not in the known or familiar, it's in the unknown. So I'm asking you to stretch, not too much, don't stretch so much that you break your muscles, but stretch just enough to grow a little bit each and every day. So which stage of life are you currently in? Are you involved in a project that uh, supports your creativity and responsibility and your growth? Or are you in a transition phase? Or are you stuck 
in your comfort zone. Which of the three is it? You'll be in one of those three phases and you'll be in different phases in each part of your life. Okay, so you have uh, the job life, the marriage or relationship life, uh, your physical health, your spiritual life, and so forth. You simply evaluate where you've become too comfortable and set new goals in those regards. I mean, test yourself. People keep doing what they know, okay? They keep repeating what they know best. Are you willing to try things that you don't know, that you're kind of unsure about, or you don't know whether you're good at them or not? If you're willing to do that and reevaluate yourself on a regular basis, at least on a yearly basis, you're sure to keep growing and sure to keep improving. Your compass is set in alignment with what the soul wants. My name is Fred Dotson. Have a nice day.